Hey everybody, welcome back to ChallengeYourself.blog. I've been working on my robot hand, so let's get started. So I did a quick and dirty video recently and I was showing how the joints were working and it, it worked out really well. Um, since then, I've made uh, quite a few upgrades to uh, the hand. I still have a couple pieces to print off, but uh, it, it's coming along really nicely. What you can see here is I've, I've used uh, some shrink wrap uh, and I've uh, cut it to size uh, for tendon sheaths. And this is to kind of help prevent uh, in the joint areas the uh, fishing line from getting uh, pinched and uh, potentially uh, cutting the line. Part of the reason for the bolts is that's where I'm going to put some uh, orthodontic uh, rubber bands uh, across the joints and what that does is it'll it'll stabilize uh, the fingers. I still wanted to have lateral movement side to side because in your hand you can uh, splay the the fingers you know side to side and I wanted to you know make sure that I still had that uh, range of motion but the rubber bands um, will keep it so that it springs back to uh, center position. Um, the rubber bands are um, ordered, but they're still on the way. So it'll, they were saying that it was going to be sometime uh, over the next uh, week to 10 days. So um, a little sad that it's going to take that long. It's already shipped, so maybe I'll be lucky and it'll uh, show up uh, before then. Um, and as you can see here, the uh, fishing line uh, I've got kind of crisscrossed and then goes down through uh, some of those holes uh, that I design in the uh, center part of the, the finger. And it, it really worked out uh, a lot better than I expected. I was uh, a little concerned uh, that it wasn't quite going to work as planned, but um, so far so good. The one thing that I'm having a little bit of uh, trouble with is when the finger is completely straight, uh, it, it takes a lot of force uh, to sometimes, um, I don't want to say break the joint, but to get it to just start. Uh, once it gets, um, once the movement gets started, it tends to uh, flex forward uh, sometimes with a little bit of a jerking motion. So. What I may end up doing um, is in the back part of uh, the like knuckle joint, I'll put a little piece of foam in the back part of that knuckle and that way when the fingers are uh, extended, that the movement, if it's not under pressure, that it'll uh, cause the hand to relax just a little bit. And that'll be enough that if you need to close the fist right away, it doesn't require um, excess force to initiate and then and then snap closed. I want it to be a lot smoother. So putting a little piece of foam in there might be the uh, the way to offset that. Scale wise, uh, this thing is uh, remarkably uh, close to uh, the hand uh, to you know my hand. The metacarpals I've uh, had uh, a series of evolution so. In the, in the beginning, uh, I started off with this, and it worked real, really well uh, for what it was. It enabled me to get the fishing line um, to follow a straight and narrow path, and it, um, it kept everything very neat, and all of the lines uh, were separated from finger to finger. Then I upgraded and I made this piece that had another set of holes on the side, but when I added uh, these bolt holes, I kind of made the mistake of lining the new side holes up with the bolt holes on the top and the bottom. So then I was like, okay, now I've got fishing line that has to kind of swoop around uh, the bolt hole and, and the bolt itself, and it, it was suboptimal. So then what I ended up doing was going to this and yeah, let's see if I can get with the lighting. It's the only un unfortunate part of having uh, black parts. The, the actual uh, metacarpal now has uh, eight holes around it 
And you may wonder, well, why would you leave, you know, the other holes? Why don't you redesign it? Um, looking down the road and part of that lateral movement, um, one, you, you want the bones to have some ability uh, to flex, especially, the, you know, the metacarpals. The metacarpals and uh, the tendons uh, actually have bands that cross from, uh, you know, first digit to second digit and across all the hand but they're it's like these two are connected and these two are connected and these two are connected so what i wanted to do is be able to have a string or a rubber band or sp something spring that connects from one metacarpal to the next and i didn't know where i wanted it so so for for the sake of design i wanted to be able to have some uh flexibility in uh where i wanted to make those fasten uh you know where i wanted to fasten each of the metacarpals so it allows me to, you know, connect. Do I want it uh, more towards the finger? Do I want it, uh, or yeah, towards the finger? Do I want it more towards the wrist? Um, does it matter? Maybe I want it across all of them. I, I don't know yet. So what I I build it that way. So down the road, I can kind of move things around, um, and it, it'll it'll help me with uh, not having to reprint uh, down the road. Now, once I've kind of cemented into place how I want it designed uh, and I'm comfortable with it. And then I can start to peel things out if I want to, you know, mass produce this, which I don't have any intentions of doing that at the moment. But if I wanted to make more of them, uh, I can trim stuff out to save on material. But for now, it just allows me to um, make changes on the fly. And one, one piece that I made uh, that I assembled onto it and that I've taken off was I made this wrist plate. And at first it was great because I ran uh, the fishing line through this and it kept all of the fishing line uh, separate. But now that I'm using, uh, now that I'm using the shrink wrap, I'm able to actually uh, shrink this down because it's a little bit larger uh, than my wrist, which that's not a, a big deal. But what I can do now is actually put probably a slot through here and I can run uh, multiple lines through uh, through the slot and keep them separated. So I was, in the wrist, there's a band uh, that kind of comes across uh, the carpels. And instead of having the tendons like going through uh, all separate, I can I can start to, uh, make it more compact and run uh, lake lines uh, together because these lines in the hand are actually run in pairs. Uh, so the string goes up one finger, comes down the other side of the finger, and it adds uh, more strength to it. Uh, but as it comes down uh, into the metacarpal, then you end up with three next to each other. At the moment, it doesn't look like there's going to be any uh, friction interference, so I'm not really worried about that as a uh, design issue, but that might be something down the road that I might need to take into consideration. So I may have to tweak the design um, to allow for more, uh, to keep the lines, uh, like lines together and line, other lines separate. Another thing that I'm kind of working on is in the, in the, uh, carpal area which is in my design currently a fused piece um, the lines are just kind of running over that I'm, I'm looking at uh, making loops through here to make it so that the lines are uh, neatly coming through I'm trying to decide whether how I want those organized uh, or grouped together so I haven't I haven't finished that yet but another thing that I'm uh, working on at the moment is I have I have the bolts here I actually made uh, new uh, joints uh, that connect the proximal flange to the metacarpal and that way the rubber bands uh, will, will connect here I'm going to do the same thing down here so that I still have range of motion uh, at the um, where the metacarpal is but I don't want as much uh, I just want it to be I want it to be flexible without being 
without too much excess range of motion. Another thing uh, on the thumb, which I'm going through a redesign as well, uh, I haven't, I ha it's still in my mind, but I haven't um, put it into Fusion 360 yet, is I want to do what I did here uh, with these metacarpals. So I wanna make sure that I have loops on the side uh, because in order to have the thumb uh, come uh, across, uh, I'm going to have to have a, a place for the string to come up through to help pull it this way. And also, if I want this finger, you know, one, you know, if these fingers, you know, come together, I, I still need um, pads uh, to come up through the hand. So I'm still in the middle of doing that. It, it's kind of neat because I've, what, I've had my printer for maybe two months and I've been working on this maybe two weeks. Uh, so I've actually gone, I, I think I've got pretty far along in, uh, in two weeks. So, and I've taken some breaks. I've worked on a few other, you know, little uh, projects around the house. Um, well, printing projects and stuff like um, I found a, a thing online for these little door, door hook things for, um, so you don't have to touch anything. It was a free design. I've been giving them away to you know, family and friends and stuff. Uh, so this has, uh, you know, been kind of a, a nice thing, uh, you know, as a gift. Uh, I also made a door hook uh, so I can hang my uh, coat when I come into uh, the room, or not coat, but uh, sweatshirt. I bought a bunch of uh, replacement nozzles and of varying sizes, so I'm interested to see it, um, how how much detail, uh, how how small I can go. Uh, if I go down to like the 0.2, because I think I'm using a 0.4, I am using a 0.4 millimeter uh, nozzle at the moment, but if I go down to a 0.2, I'm curious to see it, um, how, how it does, you know, f with the fine detail. I haven't, like I said, I've only been doing this for, I don't know, a couple months. I've been learning a, a tremendous amount on Fusion 360. There's a lot of neat uh, tricks um, that... I'm picking up and I'll be working on something, I'll look online at something and I'll go, oh, okay, that's how I do that. And it, it's kind of like a, a snowball. You, it just kind of, once it starts rolling, you get a lot of momentum moving down. There are a lot of things that I wish I knew a month ago when I was uh, getting comfortable with Fusion 360 and when I was started designing this thing um, two weeks ago, that I know now that if I was to start from scratch, I would do things a lot different in the, the program. So it's hard to uh, explain all of those things in a, in a short sound bite, but it, it, things like I wasn't grouping stuff into, into components, uh, which I remembered when I was looking at some of the tutorials in the beginning of uh, the Fusion 360 experience, that uh, I didn't know what I was doing and I just wanted to get my project done. So I got my project done and I'm like, well, why isn't, why can't I take some of these and group them into, you know, bodies? I accidentally deleted uh, one of my, like there was a little piece of geometry that was like way off and it was like a, a sliver of something that was like several tens of millimeters away. I deleted it and it wiped out part of one of my components. So I had to redraw the whole component, uh, but it was listed as a body and not a component. So now I'm like, oh, well, that's why, you know, you make a separate, you know, component for that. Dumb uh, noob type things that uh, you take for granted when you're doing this. And I'm sure that, you know, the experienced person is probably going to look at like, yeah, that's, you know, kind of obvious that you need to do that. And it's like, well, yeah, okay, now I know that. So uh, lesson learned. And, uh, you know, I'll see if I can uh, start grouping some of these things into, you know, separate components so that I don't accident accidentally delete stuff. And if I do, hopefully it'll be, you know, with the component because I'm finding that my organization of um, when you have so much, so many bodies in a, in a drawing that are all one, it gets really cumbersome and uh definitely need to definitely need to do that differently 
After I get done with the fused carpal section of the hand, I have to do the uh, fourth finger, pinky finger uh, knuckle, um, where it connects to the metacarpal. And then from there, um, the hand, oh, and the thumb, I have to do the thumb, I have to redo the thumb. Once those are done, uh, I should be able to start working on uh, the forearm. What that entails is then I start getting into the servos, the servos that are actually going to start um, uh, flexing uh, the, the fingers. I have a rough design, um, and a lot of that's based off of uh, this plate, which now I'm probably going to change the plate. I'm kind of at a crossroads. Do I continue with the plate that I have or modify a little bit and use the forearm that I already designed, or do I modify that? Uh, to contain it. It's not pretty, uh, but at this point I'm not really concerned about the looks of it. So it'll, I want to, I want to get something that's functional and then worry about uh, the, you know, tidiness or prettiness of it. It's not like I couldn't cover it up anyway, but there's nothing uh, built into it that has anything uh, for uh, any, you know, forearm covers. So all of the servos would be exposed. And, uh, but that, that's part of, you know, the experiment. I'm just really happy with how this, uh, turned out. One of the other things that I've evolved in, in this is you can see I have a, uh, a working, uh, ball joint. I was impressed that the ball joint works as it is and that it doesn't, I didn't break it in, uh, you know, setting the two together. Um, but the range of motion wasn't exactly uh, what I wanted it to be. Uh, so from there, um, I actually kind of carved a, I actually carved a, a little bit of a, an arc in the front and back, and that actually gave me full uh, range of motion on one side but not side to side. So it, it limited uh, lateral motion uh, while still giving full range of motion uh, front to back. Now, granted, at first you're like, well, your hand only goes, well, you can technically stretch your hands to be, you know, uh, at a 90 degree angle. Is it kind of painful for some people? Probably. So I didn't want to limit that, but at the same time, uh, I figure with the rubber bands, I can kind of limit the, the motion or at least it'll uh, force the servo to kind of strain a little bit. And that, that's something I got to figure out down, down the road, but I got the, the motion where I wanted it. Then after that, I looked at the lack of bolt holes and that was where I got to, uh, this with, uh, the bolts in place. One other challenge that I kind of ran into was I, I made this large, uh, ball joint uh, the bottom of the wrist and it turned out okay and it did work with this plate but what I found was it actually broke uh, the little pieces here uh, that hold it together now uh, I thought well what could I do to you know fix that if I put super glue in there it's gonna make it extremely rigid and chances are trying to uh, put the two together I'll damage uh, the joint, uh, whether it be the ball or you know the inner member or the outer member. One of the two is going to give. So what I thought I would do, and I haven't tried it yet, uh, if I uh, decide to go with this, there's two ways I could do this. Uh, the quick and dirty way to do this would be uh, I might be able to use a hot glue gun and jam hot glue down in here and then you still end up with something that has just a little bit of give. If I used epoxy or super glue, it's too rigid and something's going to give. The hot glue gun might work. Um, maybe if that's a little bit too much, uh, if it's still too rigid, I might be able to use like rubber cement, but then it gets messy and I'm not sure if that uh, is going to create other problems. Um, the other way to handle this is once I get, you know, now that I'm getting kind of large on the ball joint side is to make a, a two piece or three piece ball joint where, um, you put 
the ball into the cup and then you have another uh, I don't know if it'd be one piece or you know two piece sleeve um, that goes over the other half of it so that you've clamped it down and then you still get the range of motion but now you've got something that uh, has it compressed in place I don't know which way I want to go with that yet there, there's some things to, to work out there it, at the moment I don't I'm not as worried about the the wrist as I am with the fingers the the wrist is kind of a non-issue at the moment it's just something that if I build it now um, I want it to be you know I just had an idea I'm gonna think about that uh, before I uh, share how I want to do that it's kind of neat because doing these videos I'm able to kind of walk through some of my own uh, thinking and I can actually uh, during the editing process especially is uh, as I'm like talking through something and listening to myself I'll come up with an idea about something and I write it down and then I'm able to you know kind of prepare it for uh, the next video so it's kind of neat uh, going through this process it really kind of gives you a chance to reevaluate uh, your your path and your your experience as you as you go along so I'd encourage anybody that's uh, doing projects and stuff to videotape themselves uh, talking about it uh, and then as you reflect it start your own YouTube channel um, and there's a lot of uh, alt you know tech out there daily motion bit shoot um, Vimeo, uh, there's a whole host of uh, places. Facebook has their own uh, platform. LinkedIn, I think, has its own, although I tend to embed most of my stuff there. So um, definitely do your own uh, videos. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful experience, and it also gets your name out there as well. One of the things that I was uh, talking about a moment ago uh, about the shrink wrap, one way I can make a more rigid uh, tendon sheath if I wanted to, if I needed something that was a little bit more sturdy than, than this, is I remembered probably 10 years ago, um, I went to Sam's Club and I bought uh, these little stir sticks. The only thing is they come in like 10 or 14,000 in a box. So I've had stir sticks for uh, probably well over 10 years now and I'm probably barely through uh, half of them. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna start uh, cutting some of these up and that way uh, I can make little channels uh, and tie them together. And what's kind of neat is if you wanna start grouping things, you take the larger uh, shrink wrap and then you can you know, put two, three, you know, four of these together um, in, in a bundle or you, know, you can use rubber bands or whatever, but the, the larger shrink wrap might actually make uh, for uh, a good way to, uh, you know, organize groups. There's there's a lot of ways to do that, but th this, uh, you know, the, the grouping. One thing I was thinking about with the fishing line uh, is I might be able to, f down the road, let, let's say that I wanted to make uh, several hands, um, I don't want to say mass produce because uh, I'm not sure I'm there. I'm not thinking that. But if I if I was to, maybe I could get fishing line that's uh, color coded. So, like all of the distal uh, phalanges would be you know red line, and all of the um, intermediates would be you know, green line, and all of the proximals would be you know blue line. And that way, as I see you know this angel hair, you know, spaghetti uh, mess, um, but it would be in colors, then I could start to kind of twine them together um, and know that, okay, I've got like the two strands that are, you know, doing this and I can, you know, group them together. I'm kind of looking at, you know, how I can simplify things if I needed to do uh, this more repetitively, you know, or, you know, if I was making be kind of funny i remember this one scene in star wars i think it was uh attack of the clones or whatever where the robots were making other robots and uh, c-3po says you know oh how perverse you know <laughs> robots making robots uh something to that effect i don't remember the exact line but 
yeah, it just kind of made me, you know, think about like, hey, if I ever got to a point, I could make a robot that, you know, starts helping me make other robots. And, you know, like Tony Stark has his, uh, I think he calls him dummy all the time. It's the one that's got like the little three fingers and it doesn't talk. It just goes, you know, makes little beeping noises. Oh, um, so in the background, if anybody's actually, you know, paying real close attention, you might see that there's a tangled mess on my uh, newly installed glass plate. Um, probably going to be using some Aquanet spray uh, to help with adhesion. It's kind of funny because I was ha I had talked about it in one of my previous videos. I had a lot of issues, not or. I didn't have terrible issues with adhesion in the beginning. Then I suddenly started getting way too much adhesion. And I don't know what prompted that, but maybe it was, you know, all the settings just happened to line up. All the tumblers were, you know, perfect. And I ended up with um, awesome adhesion. Then, like a light switch, one day the adhesion was terrible and I was having all kinds of problems. I ordered the glass plate. I got it where I was building uh, rafts, and the rafts basically look like this. You can kind of kind of see through it a little bit. It's kind of hard to see here, but um, the raft enables uh, you to have uh, basically a, a large body that uh, a smaller body uh, is uh, attached to, and then the supports uh, all come up uh, from from the raft into the base of this. And then sometimes you can break it away, sometimes you have to cut it away. Uh, so it's not, not that big of a deal, but I uh, put the glass plate on there and I've read a little bit on, online about how the, the bed level is now like perfect, like across, you know, front to back. And what I was finding was with the temperature changes and whatnot and, and you know, with the season change, uh, I was starting to have one a little bit of uh, a difference in the in the center of the soft bed that came with it, um, and there was also some I don't want to call them gouges. It was almost like plastic buildup on like a little hill, and then I'd have like a couple like little divots. Uh, it was like a weird warping uh, of the surface, and I think that that was just enough to um, break the surface tension or not surface tension but the uh, adhesion so that now if you have an imperfection and it flexes just a little bit now it just goes snap it's kind of like a 3m uh, pull hook you know you stick the thing on the wall with the hook and you peel away the the adhesive back thing and by doing that you're you're breaking the adhesion uh, to the wall so you're able to pull the hook off without damaging the paint it's kind of the same same deal when you start having uh, imperfections in your surface. So anyway, uh, I got to the glass plate and now it's perfectly level, but the glass plate is also a very um, non-adhesive uh, surface. So the uh, Aquanet hairspray uh, that I've intended to use should help uh, with that. Because sometimes I'll have a perfect build, everything's great, it's all stuck on there but sometimes I'll hear it and I can hear it kind of cracking uh, throughout the print. It's And I think the taller the print is and the more the head's like kind of dragging across the surface and maybe that's something I just, you know, increase the temperature of the, uh, the tool in that's hot, that you're, you're, you know, pushing it back and forth and it's got a lot of drag on there. Well, the higher you get, the more, um, you know, lateral motion you're starting to get. And all it takes is just a little bit for it to get uh, broken at the surface and then the whole thing comes off. And then the thing's like sliding around the plate with the, the hot tool and it's making this like snarled spaghetti mess. And it, it was kind of frustrating last night. I just like shut everything off after it was kind of late and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to bed. <laughs> so that was kind of the, the cure for that. But, um, you know, it's the things that, you, you know, you learn along the way to, uh, you know, make make yourself more efficient, uh, make the uh, print quality a lot better. Um, I was really happy that when I uh, posted a picture yesterday, I had a couple of uh, comments and, you know, one person was like, wow, those are like, you know, really, uh, you know, really small lines, really great detail. Um, it's like, 
it makes makes you happy to see that kind of outpouring. It's it's interesting, you know, seeing other people that are new to this as well that uh, have had more challenges uh, than I've had. You know, I've not stumbled into some of the same stumbling blocks that they have, um, and that could be you know based on you know they've got a, a different model a different make um a larger bed which you know i have a small bed so that makes it a lot easier for me uh as a beginner if i would have bought a larger bed i would probably be a lot more frustrated with uh you know the bed leveling and all of that um but it, when other people you know see the work and they go wow that looks really good you know it makes you feel good that you know you're able to make something uh that um, you know, it was turned out as good as it, as it did. So this is the door hook that I designed, uh, that I hang my, uh, sweatshirt off of. It's made to size, so it's awesome. Um, uh, I've had, I have some other ones that I've bought at the store and the thing is, uh, we've moved a few times, uh, from New Hampshire to, you know, Virginia and, you know, whatnot. And it seems like, the door sizes are always just a little bit off and then these things like clunk around or they don't fit you know when you close the door and stuff this door i tend to leave open uh so i don't really care if this doesn't fit because i'm not gonna like slam it um but you know if, if you want um uh, the stl for this i can you know uh post that um and then you can modify it to fit your your door um if you want to know where these are um I can send the link to this as well. Um, the robot hand is mine, so I'm not sharing that uh, right now. Yeah, so if there's anything else uh, that you want to know about, uh, you know, software-wise, I've been trying to post some of the links for where uh, where stuff is. Uh, let me know. Uh, send me a comment, uh, you know, or a message or whatever. I'm on, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Uh, so, you know, just send me a message and, you know, I can get that information to you. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. And, you know, if anything, please share the video. I really appreciate it. it really helps out the channel. And I'll talk to you soon.